This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. So this is my disclosures, if I can get it, there we go. So the overview really is, I think technical tips and tricks can be a, a longer talk than seven minutes, but we'll try to compress in what I think are important or a little bit about the angiosome. I think that has a lot about how we approach this or uh, wires and catheters. I'll mention my own biases and uh, we've already covered some of the results, uh, but I'm gonna, you know, just make the note that we're not talking about, uh, this is very inconsistent here. Uh, we're not talking about tibial atherectomy. I don't know, there we go. So if I can move there. Uh, this has been mentioned earlier that, you know, we don't always get the result we want with a bypass, that there's failures. And I think that uh, some of this has to do with tibial disease. But it also is clear that in intervention, if you don't get all the way down, or if you embolize, and I think that's an underappreciated thing we see with interventions and underappreciation. We've seen the angiosome before, and it's clear that, uh, you know, in the normal foot, certain parts are perfused primarily by certain vessels, but there's a dense uh, collateral network available, and uh, um, so it's not always essential that we have to have this targeted revascularization. But the results in a couple of studies do show that if you have an angiosome-directed revascularization versus not, it changes your outcomes with significant differences, as you see here. And this is just a case here, I, you know, to demonstrate this, this is an ischemic first toe ulcer, uh, and this was treated with an anterior tibial uh, angioplasty. You can see, again, this PT is open, but there's very little in these squiggly collaterals indicating there's not a patent pedal arch. This is the delayed image showing the reconstituted anterior tibial, and this is the injection afterwards. And the same thing goes for this. Uh, this is rare, I think, but inframalleolar intervention does play a role. This is a lateral uh, fifth toe ulcer, and you see this, again, not, an not a complete arch, uh, and this is the lateral plantar artery that has a focal stenosis that's treated. Um, I do think that angiosome is less or maybe even unimportant in certain instances. I, rest pain and no tissue loss, I think chasing multiple vessels uh, sometimes is, is wrong. Tissue loss above the ankle is generally not affected so much by an angiosome. Uh, you know, superficial small lesions uh, when you actually do have adequate toe pressure are things that we shouldn't be uh, worried so much about the angiosomes. Um, you know, diabetics uh, are a problem. Non-diabetics generally have better cross collaterals, patent pedal arch. So in diabetics, the angiosome may be uh, important. Uh, but again, and with an intact pedal arch, uh, often that flow is adequate. Um, so technically, what uh, what are important? I think that tibial access uh, or intervention in the access site is important. I still go up and over for most, but it it is with a good sheath. You need good support, particularly treating occlusions. So the farther you are from it, the, the larger the access needs to be. Uh, contralateral, generally I'm using uh, six or seven French uh, 70 centimeter long sheaths, uh, and anagrade would be a five or six. I know others would use maybe a French size smaller in this, but I like having coaxial catheters inside of this, and I can push harder with that and get through things. An angled catheter is good to get selected tibials, but it's not really what you want to use to advance a small angled catheter down in the tibial. It needs to be a straight catheter generally to get the best results in crossing. Stenoses, I think, are best crossed with an 014 wire. And you must have a support catheter behind that because the wires get deformed easily and you really lose tip control quickly after one or two deformations of an 014 wire tip. Uh, you can use a balloon uh, if you want, uh, although I prefer to use a support catheter. Total occlusions and the tibials in my hands are best crossed with an 018 wire. Uh, and, and that um, I think the support and the hydrophilic tip that you get is much 
uh, more uh, effective. Uh, there is some aggressive aspect to this, but again, um, if you know what your backups are, you shouldn't be worried about pushing a wire out the side of a tibial. Um, and again, you need to have a uh, support catheter uh, or a balloon, which is essential to cross these occlusions. But if you do have trouble and you can tell that the wire is looped in a deep plane, you're not going to get into a true lumen distally, uh, or you just hit calcium, you can't get across, retrograde access is a good bailout. So briefly about how do I do that, I, uh, you need to stabilize the foot. Um, under the drape. I usually don't have a separate drape. I cut a hole in it and put a prep it and then put an uh, adhesive dressing uh, across that so you can see it. Micropuncture set up and have nitro to inject from above as you're doing it. And ultrasound guided access, I think for most surgeons, we're used to using ultrasound. Uh, it is probably the preferable for most pedal, certainly, and distal posterior tibial and anterior tibial access. I like uh, to put the local in under ultrasound guidance, and you need to again have that nitro to relieve the spasm, because if you just manipulate the vessel spasms quickly sometimes, and particularly the younger the patient. And use a reflective needle on ultrasound and the 24 gauge uh, 8, 0 and 8 wire again. You're not able to fluoro this, you need to have a feel for that wire when it's going in. Angiographic guided tibial access also works really well, and that's um, a technique that you need to set up just right. Uh, you need to have a bi uh, two views of the foot uh, able to get easily oriented with your um, II, and you need to have mag view collimate it. You need to not try to lower the uh, image intensifier down so close that you can't work on the foot. You need to have space to work over it, not bumping into it. Um, and this just shows a setup where you know, the foot is rotated, you've got a direct AP view that you're trying to puncture the anterior tibial, but then you have it set up where you can rotate that to 90 degrees to detect the depth that you're going. And just an image there of the setup on the side. So I don't use a sheath, uh, although uh, that is uh, the routine for some. A four French sheath is thought to be routine. I think the smaller device you put in, the better. I again use 018 wires to cross, uh, and uh, I use an 018 support catheter. The CXI catheter is the best because it doesn't taper up to a larger diameter as you go farther in. You know, sometimes you put a wire in from below and it just passes right up through, uh, where from above it didn't work. Uh, other times you have to meet in the middle, and uh, these can take time, and they're very, uh, you know, testing your, your patience on a, on a day when things are running long. But the double balloon technique, uh, where you put a balloon in from a below, can actually uh, be the final, where you have a four French sheath in. You go ahead and put a small balloon from below and a larger from above. But um, you know, meeting in the middle is uh, you know frustrating sometimes when you're in that different plane. I want to show a picture here in a minute of uh, balloon from above. Capture of the wire. There are usually you just get a wire through and you can manipulate it into your proximal catheter. Uh, you can use a snare or this device here uh, that has a little cone shape uh, at the end of it, contrast being injected out of it in a small balloon that centers it above that and arrests flow, and then you just slide your wire from above right into your catheter and right out your sheath at the other end. Um, your distal access site management is really pretty easy, but I think it's important to get a balloon down, and I always balloon the distal angioplasty or access site with a balloon. So you get your balloon down distally after you've done your work from above and pull the wire through and through wire out, pass an 014 wire distal to your access catheter distally and put a balloon up in that. Uh, you can inflate a blood pressure cuff shortly for uh, control if needed. Uh, this just shows uh, really quickly a patient with, uh, you know, two-stage intervention, the fempop and, uh, and a tibial and trying to get through. I, this is... Uh, uh, there's really no inline flow, reasonable collateral, but no inline flow to any tibial. And I want to show this because the use of roadmap, even though you try to stabilize the foot, is really a frustrating thing when you're using angiographics. So it's really all about fluoro and then it can, a puff or it can, you know, intermittent injection from above to see the target vessel. To try to do a roadmap uh, when you're working on the foot. Uh, is really frustrating. This just shows here on the screen on the right an access needle in, and we got up and through that, and this is the runoff, uh, and I'll point out here a drug eluting stent in the area that was totally occluded. Um, this is another case, I think, that uh, shows you know, the challenge of trying to get through. Here's a AT that really ends nowhere on the foot. 
Uh, TP trunk is out, but distally the PT is filled by collaterals. So this was accessed distally here with an injection. You see the support catheter and the wire um, having a hard time getting through even from below. Uh, so coming from above with a small balloon and the wire through it, you inflate this balloon and then on deflation, you actually try to pass the wire out into that space created by the balloon. And that's uh, a technique that's uh, essential, I think, to be able to have success in a wide range of it. And here's a completed image uh, there with balloon and then a, again, a stent and then the runoff. Um, this has already been talked about, but I think failure rates are pretty high in these. Uh, and I think that patency is an issue. Um, and you know, when you get a result like this, uh, you know, I feel really good about that. Long inflations are important. I think that uh, longer balloons are important typically in these, in these cases. Uh, and you can't just take the balloon down, take a picture and go home. You need to wait and see how it looks for a few minutes. Uh, again, a longer balloon uh, technique. Uh, I'll show this quickly just because I think we're running long, oh, short on time. But this is uh, you know, a case where you know, you have to be happy with what you have. This is a patient who went to the OR uh, and the vessel was so calcified it couldn't bypass it. Uh, and so we took him to the angio suite and this is the lesion down near where the, uh, the incision was made to try to bypass to, uh, but uh, run off through this uh, perineal uh, with a collateral to the PT. This is after successful treatment of that and the runoff to the foot. Uh, so it is, I think, essential that we have this opportunity to, to bail back. Now, other tools, uh, I don't really see much role for these in the tibials. They may change plaque characteristics with a cutting balloon, scoring balloon, or forced focus. But you've got to get them there, and particularly a cutting balloon or the scoring balloon often won't track in nearly as easy as a, a really nice low-profile tibial design balloon. Uh, and these results with DES, I think, are really the key. This is uh, something that I use probably 20, 25 percent of the time uh, in tibial intervention. You need to be ready to put a DES in if you don't have, and it's usually not the whole vessel, it's usually focal. So uh, tibial stenting is sort of the, one of the things I think is important. We've got some new things coming maybe with uh, bioresorbable scaffold if, that allow, if anyone wants to use an off-label device uh, coming soon that might actually add some effectiveness in putting tibial stents in. Uh, again, this is just what it can look like if you balloon and wait a while, it'll come back and this is with a tibial stent. So on that, I will finish in record time. Thank you. Thank you.